uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning if you're uh, joining us from the West Coast. Um, and welcome to the Garden Light LED Landscape and Architectural Lighting Design Training. My name is uh, Bruce Kennison with Garden Light LED. And today, what we really want to accomplish is three things is, is talk about when you're doing a landscape lighting and architectural lighting design, what are your objectives? What are you looking to accomplish with your design? What are you looking to uh, accomplish for your client? What are the principles, the basic principles you want to adhere to? And then also, what are the different lighting techniques you can use to accomplish your objectives and your principles? Um, and keep in mind with this webinar, it's going to be about a half hour. Uh, it could go to about 40 minutes, depending on Q&A. If you have any questions, please type them in. I'll be able to answer them at the end of the webinar. And also, Brittany McCauley, our marketing director, will be sending this uh, PowerPoint deck to all attendees, um, if not this afternoon, latest tomorrow morning. So without further ado, uh, let's start the uh, program. And I just have to X out here real quick. Bear with me for a second. I need to pull this down. Uh, the power of design. Um, basically, the power of design, when you look at this, this home right here, um, you know, obviously somebody spent a lot of time, money, you know, architects, uh, beautiful architectural uh, features of the home, the windows, the hardscape, the, uh, the driveway, the, uh, the garage doors, you know, the landscape, you know, really everything that's associated with this home and this property is absolutely beautiful. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, as nice as it looks during the day, if it's lit up properly at night, it's going to look even better. It's going to look absolutely spectacular. Um, so, you know, anybody who is going to build a home like this with the, uh, the, the, the architecture and the uh, landscape, they're really doing themselves a disservice by not lighting it up at night. Because the fact of the matter is this, is as nice as a property, a home, the architecture, the landscape looks during the day, the outdoor living spaces, if you light it up right at night, it's going to look a lot better. Okay. So you always want to make sure you take that property and beautify it with your lighting design. And with that said, you really want to keep uh, some basic lighting objectives, um, you know, uh, in hand that you really want to accomplish. The first is, you know, enhancing the beauty. OK. And again, as beautiful as this home is, as beautiful as the landscape is. OK. Uh, at night, if you're going to light it up correctly. All right. And you're going to adhere to the basic principles. It's going to look a lot better at night than it, uh, than it does during the day. OK. Um, Another thing you're looking, an objective that you want to accomplish is you're going to make the property safer, okay? And what I'm saying by that is any kind of stairs, you know, steep inclines, declines, you always want to make their, sure they're well lit, okay? When uh, people, whether they're the homeowners or have uh, visitors stopping by, you know, any kind of uh, stairs, steps, inclines, declines, anything like that, you always want to make sure they're well lit without the glare shining into their eyes. Because by doing this, you're definitely going to make that property a lot safer to walk around. Uh, and it's very, very important for a client to do that, especially with people that are uh, to the home for the first time. So, you know, definitely an objective you have is you want to make the property safer to walk around. The third is security. Uh, it's been proven that the biggest deterrent to any kind of illegal entry is lighting. Uh, that's over, you know, the uh, the threat of, um, you know, a home security system. Uh, you know, a, a guard dog or guns or anything like that, people do not want to be seen. So without a doubt, when you do a landscape lighting uh, system and you provide that, you know, architecturally and on the landscape for a client, you are without a doubt making our house more secure, okay? So this house right here, you can see that if it's in the neighborhood um, and the other neighbors, the other houses in the neighborhood are not well lit, if somebody did decide to break into a house in that neighborhood, it's not going to be this house. OK, so you're definitely going to make their house more secure, which is really important to people because, you know, there's a lot of families that, you know, one or uh, two of the family members might be traveling for work quite a bit and they definitely want to make their house more secure. OK, so that is definitely uh, an objective that you're going to want to accomplish for your homeowner. The other is the, uh, extending the living space. OK, uh, as you as you can see, a, a lot of people, I'm sure you have a lot of clients with some beautiful homes. Outdoor living spaces are just getting more and more popular. Um, people are uh, spending more money on it. Um, you know, and what you're really looking to do is extend the living space, okay? 
and without increasing their tax base. Because basically, you know, you're taking that whole property and you're making their living room even bigger. Okay. And if you look at this setting right here with this beautiful, uh, you know, outdoor structure and the outdoor seating area, if this wasn't well lit, you know, there's no reason why a homeowner shouldn't be able to go out and enjoy this outdoor living space. Okay. So without a doubt, another objective you have is you're going to extend the living space for your client. So when you're talking to a client, you know, you want to educate them on this and tell them these are your objectives. You know, the first is to enhance the beauty of the landscape and architecture. They spent a lot of money on this beautiful uh, architecture of the home, the windows, the hardscape, the stonework, the outdoor living spaces, the softscape, you know, the, uh, the plant material, the patios, the gazebos, the water features. Okay, you always want to make sure you explain what we're looking to do is enhance the beauty of your landscape and architecture at night. And again, the fact of the matter is this, as nice as a house, a landscape looks during the day, it's going to look even better at night if you put it in a professionally designed lighting system. Okay. Number two is explain to your client, you're make you're looking to make their property safer. Again, you know, stairs, steps, inclines, declines, anywhere where, you know, it needs to be well lit. You're going to make sure that you're going to light that accordingly and make the property safer to walk through. Uh, number three is security. Again, very, very important for a lot of people now. They want their house as secure as possible. Um, and again, the most well-lit house in the neighborhood is going to be the least likely to be broken into. Okay, so without a doubt, they might have a security system. They might have other things that are going to make them feel secure. But a landscape lighting system is actually going to make their house more secure than any other mechanism that they have. Okay, because again, the biggest deterrent to illegal entry is lighting. And then the other is, you know, I, I visit a lot of properties, these beautiful homes, and they got these beautiful outdoor living spaces. And then they just kind of think they can put the lighting on the back burner. And they're really doing themselves a disservice because they spent all this money on this beautiful outdoor living space. What you're looking to do is extend their living room. OK, so instead of having a uh, 6,000 square foot home, you want to turn their house into a 10,000 square foot home. All right. So definitely you want to explain these objectives. These are what you want to accomplish. And you want to let your homeowner know that you're going to enhance the beauty of the landscape and architecture. You're going to make it safer to walk around a property. You're definitely going to make their house more secure. And you're looking to extend their living space without increasing their tax base. Now, with that said, lighting principles. So basically, you know, lighting design, a lot of people are hesitant to doing a lighting design just because they, they want to make sure they do a really, really good job. Um, to be honest with you, if, if you adhere to these basic principles we're going to go over um, in, a, in a couple minutes, you cannot put in a bad lighting system, okay? But you really want to adhere to these basic lighting principles, okay? But after that, the way everybody's going to design a lighting system is going to be different. So the way I design a lighting system compared to some other contractors I've trained in the past, other people I've worked with, other salespeople in the industry, we're all going to design it differently. But we want to make sure we adhere to these basic lighting principles. And if you do that, you can't put in a bad lighting design. OK. And the first is cohesion. And basically what we mean by this, whether it's the front of the yard, the back of the yard, the side of the yard, you know, you always want to have continual light going through the landscape. OK, whether it's the landscape, whether it's the front of the house, uh, you know, palm tree and evergreen, you want to make sure that you have continuous light going across the scene. OK, and when you do this, you can do it with a combination of a lot of different lighting techniques. You can use pathway lighting. You can use up lighting. OK, you can use up lighting on a house. Uh, we don't have any down lighting here, but you can have some down lighting coming out of the eaves of the home. OK, but no matter what, use different techniques, but you want to have con cohesion. You want to have continuous light going through that lighting scene. OK, and as you can see here, there's really no black holes. You have continual light going through the front of this yard in the house. So that's number one, cohesion. Number two is creating depth. Very, very important. Okay. Now creating depth, um, you know, in the back of the house, you're going to have lower light levels up against the house with higher light levels away from the house. And what that's going to do, it's going to make the house, the property look deeper. Okay. The front of the property, if you have some specimen trees by the road, you want to use lower light levels leading up to higher light levels up against the house because it's going to make the front yard look deeper. OK, that's how you're going to create depth. Now, when you're creating depth, you have to take in consideration what 
is the material that you're lighting up. The lighter the material, the brighter it's going to look. Okay. But what you're going to do here is, and I can see in this photo right here, this actual backyard looks deeper leading up to the gazebo. Okay. So we have cohesion, we have continuous light going through the property. All right. But we have different light levels that is making this backyard look deeper. Okay. So it's really, really important that you always want to create depth. Number three is focal points. And this is something you really want to discuss when you're with the homeowner, when you're talking to them about the project. You know, you always want to find out what is very near and dear to them. It could be this specimen tree here, which is absolutely beautiful, as you can see. It could be a statuary. It could be a water feature. It could be a waterfall. Um, you know, it could be a gazebo, a sitting area. Okay, whatever they want to stand out, you want to deem as a focal point. And with that said, you want to make sure that that focal point has a 360 degree view that you can uh, admire that focal point from you know all different angles. And you always want to make sure that a focal point is a little bit brighter, a little bit higher lit than everything else surrounding it because your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest point. So if you walk out of the backyard and this tree right here is uplit, downlit, it's absolutely beautiful, you're automatically going to walk out and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at this tree Okay, because you made that a little bit brighter and you've made it a 360 view and that's become a focal point. So automatically when you're at the house for the first time or you've been there for 100 times, every time you walk out, the first thing your eye is going to do is go right to that focal point because you made that brighter than everything else. Okay, so you always want to have that discussion with the homeowner. What do you want to stand out? Where do you want people to be drawn? Uh, the, the next is reflectivity, okay? Really, really important to take this into consideration with focal points and also creating depth, okay? Because the lighter the surface, whether it is a plant material or if it's wood or if it's stone, the lighter that object, the more reflectivity you're going to get off of that object and the brighter it's going to look, okay? Now, you can see here, it's a white structure. There's some snow here, so obviously you're going to get a lot more reflection off of this also. But because this is a lighter object, a lower lumen level was used, okay, but it actually looks brighter because you're getting so much reflection off of the white pillars, okay? Also, you can see right here this plant material, this tree, it's a lighter bark, so you're getting a lot of reflection off of that, okay? Now, the opposite can be said if the plant material or if the color of a structure or the stone is darker that's not going to reflect light that's going to suck light in okay so here you can see some evergreens okay that actually are well lit okay but it's not going to look as bright because this evergreen is actually sucking the light in it's not reflecting the light okay now hypothetically if these trees right here with the lighter bark and the lighter uh, leaf material we're lining this walkway here and we were uplighting those, we would get so much reflection off of that that all this whole area in here would be well lit. Okay. So you just got to make sure the reflectivity of the object that you're lighting up. The darker it is, whether it's hardscape, softscape, it's going to draw light in. It's not going to reflect it. The lighter it in it is, it is going to reflect. So you always have to uh, take this in consideration when you're uh, designing focal points and also creating depth. Okay, what is the reflectivity of the object you are lighting up? This is to me, uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, and anytime I do a lighting design, this is the single most important principle I try to adhere to, and it's quality and direction. Okay, so whenever you're designing a project, you wanna make sure that when a homeowner client is walking through this property, admiring their landscape, their home, the last thing you want to have is a light shining into their eyes, okay? So you want to do everything in your power to use the proper fixtures, the proper techniques to make sure that you only see the effect of the light and not the source, okay? Now here you can see a directional light that's uplighting this post right here. So walking through here, this could be a little bit of a glare issue, but what was used here was a, a, a Hexel louver where you put that into the fixture and that's going to cut down on the glare. OK, so not only pick the correct fixture, but also the accessories to make sure that you're only going to see the effect, not the source of the light. OK, again, for me, the most important principle to adhere to is quality and direction. 
The next is perspective, and this is another conversation you want to have with your client. Uh, you definitely want to ask them, you know, how are they viewing the property? Um, you know, are they viewing it just from inside of the house outside? Um, are they walking around the property, you know, uh, and seeing the whole backyard in a 360 view or a 180 view? And with that said, you want to design accordingly. I can't tell you how many clients I've spoken to where actually the most important vantage point as far as the way they wanted to view their lights was from the inside of the house. Okay, and if that's the case, you want to make sure that you ask your client, you know, if that's really important for you, it, can I come into your home, view the outdoors so I can see it from the inside the way you're going to view it from the inside out? Okay, so what is your perspective? How are they viewing the house? And you really want to take that into consideration with any lighting design. Okay, so there might be a tree in the back, all the way back uh, of the property that they're only viewing from their home out, outwards. So you only want to uh, illuminate the tree on that side of the uh, of the tree, what that they're facing. Now, if the tree is in the middle of the yard and they're walking around that in a 360 circle, they're looking at it from all different angles. You want to make sure you uh, you you uh, design that accordingly with maybe three fixtures or four fixtures to box around that uh, that tree. Okay, so definitely perspective. You want to have that conversation with your client and take that in consideration anytime you're doing a lighting design. Balance and symmetry, this is the same, obviously, the same uh, photo we showed you before, but it's really a, a good way of showing this reflectivity, but also balance and symmetry. You know, you just want to make sure that you have balance and symmetry, that, you know, you're not going to illuminate, you know, two or three or three to four to pillars here, that you want to definitely have balance with one, two, three, four. Okay, you want to illuminate all those pillars. Then also the specimen trees right here, you can see one, two, three. You're not going to do one and not the other. You're going to do all three of these. And by doing that, you're gonna create balance and symmetry throughout the landscape lighting design. So again, lighting techniques recap. Again, very, very important, cohesion. You wanna do everything in your power to not have any kind of black holes. You could do this with different lighting techniques, up light, down light, uh, path light, okay? But just make sure that through that whole lighting scene, the front of the house, the back of the house, the side of the yard, you wanna have cohesion, no black holes, okay? Create depth. In the backyard, again, up against the house, lower light level, away from the house, a higher light level. That's gonna make the house look deeper, okay? The backyard look deeper. Focal points, anything that's near and dear to the uh, client, you know, statuary, water feature, you always wanna make sure you're gonna make that a little bit brighter. And again, your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest point. So the focal point, sitting area, anything like that, they want to stand out. You make that a little bit brighter. Every time somebody comes to their home, the first thing they're going to do is look right at that focal point, whatever they deem, statuary, water feature, whatever it may be. Reflectivity, again, when it comes to creating depth and focal points, always take into consideration what is the reflective value of the surface that you are lighting, whether it's hardscape, softscape, tree material, bark, leaves, okay? The lighter the object, the more reflection you're going to get. The darker the object, the more it's not going to reflect, it's actually going to suck the light in, okay? And again, as I said before, quality and direction, my number one goal, very important, and I like to explain that to the client. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I use the proper equipment, the proper accessories, that you're not going to see the source of the light. You're only going to see the effect, okay? Really, really important. Perspective, again, make sure you speak with your client. You know, how are you viewing the property? Okay, and depending on how they're viewing the uh, property is going to dictate exactly how you're going to design that project. And then balance and symmetry. Again, you want to make sure, you know, pillars, specimen trees, boxing the side of a house. You're not going to do one and not the other. You always want to create balance and symmetry. Okay, so these are your lighting principles uh, that you really want to make sure you adhere to. And like I said before, you know, lighting is very subjective. You know, so the way, you know, if we had 10 different people do 10, uh, 10 different uh, designs and we all adhere to these basic principles, we'd still have 10 different lighting designs. OK, they all be nice. OK, you just want to make sure you adhere to these basic principles. If you do that, like I said, you cannot put in a bad landscape lighting design. Now, lighting techniques. These are the techniques you're going to use to accomplish, you know, your lighting objectives and also uh, your lighting principles. And the first one is up lighting. This is very popular. Obviously, uh, you know, directional lights, well lights are going to be a majority of the fixtures that you use. Uh, you can see right here, this is a white birch. Uh, you notice here with the white birch, uh, you know, a whiter uh, bark, 
lighter plant material, so you're getting a lot of reflection off this. So even though we have some path lights here, you're getting so much reflection off this tree that you're actually illuminating this pathway, okay? Now, general rule of thumb with uplighting a tree, I like to take the, uh, the, the, the bullet light or the uh, well light and take it halfway from the uh, canopy, uh, the, uh, the trunk of the tree to the canopy. And I like to use, depending on the size of the canopy, but usually either a 40 or 60 degree optic so you catch all this canopy on the tree, okay? So that is up lighting. Now, this is my favorite way of lighting, uh, depending on what part of the country you're in. Sometimes you don't have as many opportunities. Um, I'm from the Northeast. We have a lot of big trees. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities for down lighting. And I, I love this uh, technique for two reasons. One is because it's objective and it's also subjective, okay? And what I mean by objective is it actually, a few fixtures is gonna give you a lot of light, okay? So right, at, right here out of this tree, we have three down lights and we're illuminating this whole grass area here with three fixtures, okay? Um, so it's objective, so you're gonna illuminate a large area. But it's also very subjective because what you're looking to do with moonlighting, downlighting, you're looking to make that just a little bit brighter than a full moon effect, okay? And I know for me, every time there's a full moon, I love to go out in my yard and walk around because it looks absolutely beautiful, okay? So not only objectively are you gonna cover a lot of area here, and illuminate this whole area, but also you're gonna make it look very beautiful, okay? Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind with downlighting. Downlighting, the higher up you go in the tree, the more light coverage you're gonna get. <clears throat> so you always wanna use a 60 degree beam spread because you want as much coverage as you can, okay? But you also wanna get up as high in the tree as you can because again, the higher up you are, the more light coverage you're gonna get, okay? So another thing is a lot of people assume if they see a tree that doesn't have a lot, lot of uh, branches on it, that's the tree they want to put the light on, but that's the actual complete opposite. Because you do want to find a tree that has a lot of branches because the higher up you are here and the branches that are down here, you're going to cascade all those shadows down onto the turf area or the walkway area like this uh, photo in the bottom, okay? So you always want to try to pick a tree that does have a lot of low-lying uh, limbs, okay, because you're going to shadow those onto the surface area. Now, here you can see, you know, a lot of people might have came in here and used a path light here and a path light here where you didn't need that, okay? By uplighting and da or downlighting out of this tree, you were able to illuminate this whole area, make it very safe, and going back to the whole thing about making it safer to walk through the property, it, it's safer to walk up these stairs and go to the front of the home, but also look how beautiful you made this whole area look. Again, a little bit brighter than a full moon effect, okay? That's down lighting. Cross lighting, okay, so cross lighting, if you have a focal point, uh, cross lighting is a really, really good idea. And cross lighting basically means you can see here, we have one fixture here on the left and one on the right. And then we're cross lighting this, um, this waterfall, okay? So this client wanted this waterfall to, to stand out. So we made this cross lighting, okay, but we also made this a little bit brighter than everything else. And you can see that your eye is drawn right to this waterfall, okay? And also, you can also notice that we actually use blue, static blue um, lights here. And the reason why our static blue or all of our static lights are so bright is we don't use filters. We actually have the LED chips are that color, okay? So you can see exactly, you know, how crisp and how bright this blue is. But this is a perfect example of cross lighting a focal point, okay, and making this waterfall really stand out. The next is mirror lighting. Uh, this is down lighting is my favorite. Mirror lighting is my second favorite. Anytime you have a natural pond, you have a man-made pond, you have a pool, you have specimen trees that surround that uh, body of water, you always want to make sure you uplight those um, those uh, plant materials. It could be a statuary, okay, anything like that. You always want to do that because what you're going to do is you're going to get reflection of that object into the pool of water, okay? And you can see how spectacular this looks, okay? This is an awesome depiction of mirror lighting, okay? Anytime you have an opportunity to do that, I highly suggest you take advantage of that. The next is niche lighting, deck lighting, okay? Now, deck lighting... Um, you can see right here, these are our deck lights. Um, the one thing you want to keep in mind here is just like moonlighting. The higher up you are, the more light coverage you're going to get. So any kind of doing it, any niche or deck lighting, 
you want to get up as high as you possibly can because again you're going to get more light coverage so if we put this fixture halfway down the light would only come out to here okay so you always want to go to the top of the post and you want to illuminate the deck area that way off of the post okay now you can see here if you have a tree right here you could also downlight out of this tree and cascade all the shadows of these branches onto the stairway coming up and also onto the deck so it's going to make this deck brighter and safer and also make it look more beautiful with two different types of lights step uh, deck lighting and then also down lighting okay but keep in mind anytime you're doing a deck light you want to get up as high as you can the only time you wouldn't want to go uh, any higher than this is let's just say hypothetically this was six feet high you wouldn't want to put it up there because then you get into the whole quality and direction part of it that if you're looking straight at that if it's that high up that light is going to shine into your eyes but most decks are you know three feet four feet high the railings so you always want to make sure you come up right underneath the rail okay so that's deck and niche lighting and step lighting again very very important um, any kind of steps stairs you always want to make sure you light those up because again you know one of your objectives is you're going to make that property safer and if you don't light up the steps you're certainly not going to make that uh, property safer so it's really really important to make sure any kind of steps stairs inclines declines you're going to have some sort of a step light now path lighting okay some people depend a little bit too much on path lighting and, and it definitely serves its purpose but there's a lot of situations where like say here if there was a pathway coming across here this plant material is a lighter color so when you up like that you're going to got a lot of reflection so you're going to actually illuminate this area as you can see this turf area is illuminated okay but right here you can't i mean you can up light these uh, wispy grass but you're not going to get enough reflection to justify in illuminating this uh, pathway so here you want to use a path light that's going to shine light directly onto that path uh, pathway okay so this is what we call a p10 light this is basically a mini wall wash on a riser it's a great fixture it's going to uh, accomplish a lot and as you can see the light is shining in one direction okay we really don't need the light to go this way so we're making sure that we're going to actually light the pathway by shining the light directly in that direction okay now this comes down to the subjectivity of it again quality and direction but you know you, you adhere to the basic principles but here i might want to consider of staggering these fixtures so having one here then one over here then one over there but again that all comes down to the subjectivity of the designer so either way is right either way is good okay but it all depends on how you want to design a project okay so this is path lights grazing okay now grazing a lot of times obviously this is a, a gateway into a beautiful home uh, we want to graze all this beautiful stonework okay usually when you're going to graze you're going to use a directional light a bullet light or a well light okay and what you want to do is you want to get about a foot away from the object you're illuminating and just have it kind of tilted just in a slight angle shining up that object this pillar okay now this is the beauty of directional lights is that you have a lot of different lumen levels so depending on the uh the light level you're looking for the reflectivity of the surface you also have different options as far as beam spreads so you have you know 12 degree 24 uh 40 and 60 degree optics and right here because it's a little bit wider this is a 24 degree optic okay now one thing keep in mind a lot of times you're going to graze the front of a home because you have this beautiful stonework you want to make sure you choose the right beam spread because let's just say hypothetically these are some windows on each side and this is the front of the house you don't want the light shining into the windows okay so when you're doing the front of the house make sure you're a foot away from the structure but also you're using a proper beam spread so the light is not shining into the windows okay so that is grazing this is silhouetting or backlighting. It's just a different way of lighting up a, a, a tree or plant material, statuary, or whatever you may be looking to illuminate. Okay, a lot of people will do it from the front and maybe shadow it onto the surface on the other side of the plant material or the statuary. Or you could do something like this, which is silhouetting or backlighting. So it's a different effect, it's a different look, okay? But it's actually silhouetting these trees and defining this border going across the uh, side of this property. Okay, so this is silhouetting, and basically the same thing. You're going to go about a, a foot away from the uh, the, the uh, trunk of the tree, 
and just shine it straight up into it. And then you're going to silhouette these trees. OK, so that's one way of doing it. Now, again, a lot of people like to do this, but it's not my favorite way of doing it. I would rather wall wash like this, OK, where you're going to take a wall wash. And again, same thing here. The further away from the object you are, the more light coverage you're going to get. So anytime you're doing a wall wash, you want to try to get as far as away to the object as you can, because the more light coverage you're going to get. OK, if we had these wall washes close up into this uh, stone structure, the light pattern would only be like this. OK, so you want to get as far away from the object as you possibly can. OK, wall wash. The next is my favorite is shadowing. I love shadowing. OK, so if you have a plant material onto a, a, a home, a structure, a wall. What you want to do is just take a, a direct, shine it up away from the uh, plant material put it on a slight angle and just shine it right up. So what you're doing is actually taking that plant material and shadowing it onto this beautiful stone wall, okay? Same thing, when you're shadowing into a home, make sure you use the proper beam spread that the light's not shining into the windows, okay? So this is shadowing, again, my favorite way of illuminating plant material up against the wall or up against the front of a home. And architectural lighting, you know, one thing with Garden Light LED, you know, we, we pride ourselves that we're not only a landscape lighting company, but also an architectural lighting company. Because unfortunately, a lot of people that do lighting designs keep out, you know, the beautiful uh, illumination of the architecture of the home. And you can see right here, we have some of our four smaller fixtures that we use here for a garage door. This is a beautiful garage door, obviously uh, spent a lot of money on that. And a homer wants to uh, highlight that, okay? So there's no reason besides, you know, just the landscape, but also you use the fixtures, you know, that we have, you know, to illuminate the architecture of the home. Now, you can see here we have some carriage lights. There's no reason why you can't incorporate landscape lighting with some carriage uh, lighting, okay? So they might have these carriage lights they spent a lot of money on, they've been there for a long time. There's no reason to get rid of those. You can just include those or incorporate those right into the rest of the landscape lighting. The only thing you want to make sure is you don't want this to be too dominant. So what you really want to do is put this on a dimmer switch, okay, and just make this, if this is the front door, as you can see right here, the front door is just a little bit brighter than everything else, and that's because the front door is the focal point. That's where you're leading your visitors, okay? So you always want to make this a little bit brighter than everything else, okay? But when you're doing this, really make sure that you do not do not ignore the beautiful architecture of the home. So you're doing the landscape lighting and you're also doing the architectural lighting. Now, this is something I just wanted to show everybody. This is what we call time closer. We have these in different sizes. And depending on your level of, in landscape lighting, um, this is actually made to help uh, close jobs. You set this up. It's a it's a uh, a temporary demo that you set up for a client. You leave it overnight. You leave it for the weekend. Um, it really works. Uh, it's going to close probably 70, 80 percent of the times you set it up. It comes with a transformer, a 125 foot um, uh, lead wire. You know some fixtures with what S2s or uh, S1s. Easy to set up, um, but it's going to help you sell jobs. But the reason why I'm talking to this in a uh, design course is when I first started in landscape lighting, uh, the owner of the company gave me one of these um, of these uh, demos and said, go out and set these up and learn about landscape lighting design. And, and, and again, the reason why I'm saying this is because this is going to really, really help you learn about design because this comes with different fixtures, different lumen levels, different beam spreads. So the more you set this up, the more you play with this, you're going to learn more about plant material, reflectivity. You know different beam spreads you know do i need a 24 degree do i need a 40 degree a 60 degree so this is a really really good educational tool to help you learn more about uh, landscape lighting design but again first and foremost is to help you close jobs okay but for anybody that's just starting out this will be really really helpful to help you learn about landscape lighting design because again the more you set it up the more you're going to learn okay um, also, another, uh, we've aligned ourselves with uh, Janet Lennox Moyer, uh, Garden Light LED, also with the uh, Illuminating Engineering Society to release Learn Nightlight. 
So if you are a little bit more experienced and you really, really want to get some awesome in-depth design expertise from the absolute leader in the landscape lighting design world, which is Janet Lennox Moyer, um, these courses are available. Um, you can go to the Illuminating Engineering um, Society site, IES, okay, and you can sign up for this. And all I can tell you is that it is the best of the best of landscape lighting design and a lot more uh, intensive than what, you know, the different things we discussed today. So if you really want to take this to another level, I would highly uh, suggest, you know, looking into purchasing these um, nightlight um, modules. Um, and also for architects, if you have any architects or uh, specifiers that are attending today, you get 10 CEUs and 10 AIA LUs um, by attending and buying these sessions. OK, so, again, it's uh, it is the best of the best. And if you really want to learn, you know, everything you need to know about landscape lighting, you'll find out from these uh, from these sessions. Uh, again, just wanted to give some credit, you know, for our photos, General Lennox Moyer, Oregon Outdoor Lighting, c Landscape Lighting, Elegant Landscape Lighting, Illuminate Landscape Designs, LED Artistry and Cognac Electric. Uh, we appreciate um, them letting us use their photos. And just wanted to end the webinar just to let you know that, you know, we are a built in the U.S. company. We're based out of Tampa, uh, Florida. Um, we have direct relationships with our uh, with our uh, designers. Uh, we have a, a team of five inside sales reps that all they know is Garden Light LED products. So um, if you have projects um, that you need help on, we have great specialty lights, different lights. Uh, for difficult design situations that we can help you with. Um, we're here to aid you in any way we can. So if you have any questions, you have a design, you have a project, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you out uh, with that. And uh, also, just to let you know, we our, our company mantra has always been to keep six months worth of inventory and on our uh, shelves. So we do have plenty of products ready to ship. So you're not gonna hear of uh, any back orders with us. But um, with that said, I, I'd love to open up to any questions if anybody has any. Uh, oh, greetings from Greece. Oh, Greece. All right. Ken, hold on. Uh, back to this downlighting, explain us more about the moonlight effect. For example, where were those lighting spots hidden? You know, you always want to try, like, like I said before, you always want to try to find a tree that has plenty of uh, low lying branches, but you always, you're going to have an opportunity depending on, you know, the tree. You always want to try to get into some sort of a like a V where there's two branches that are br uh, breaking away from each other. That way you can put that uh, fixture in there, try to hide it the best you can. And the one thing, going back to the whole thing about quality and direction, um, our V3 downlight actually has an extended shroud on it. And the reason we do that is because, you know, as high you, you want to get up as high in the tree as you can because, again, more light coverage you're going to get. But with that shroud coming down, the extended shroud, when you look up into that tree, you'd have to actually intentionally want to look at that fixture to actually see the, the, the source of the light, okay? So you always want to try to put the fixture up as high as you can. You're going to use that extended shroud, and you always want to try to find an area where it's going to be hard for somebody to, to, to actually locate that fixture. So um, depending on the tree, you're always going to have an opportunity in different areas. You know, like I said, a lot of times it's where two branches are breaking up, uh, away from each other. But that's where you usually want to put the fixture. Um, is there any other question? Oh, do you guys offer any sort of color changing or RGBW fixtures? Uh, we don't. Right now, we just have static colors. Um, uh, and again, our static colors are just second to none. And the reason being is most people will use a, a lens. We actually use the diodes. OK, so if you have a green fixture, it's green diodes. If you have a blue fixture, it's blue diodes. Now, at RGBW, we are looking, we are working with our engineering team to come out with an RGBW solution. The only thing I would say is, you know, when you look at RGBW, you have to have multiple diodes. So to really get a really good crisp color and also to get a really high light level. And one thing with colored fixtures, there's no such thing as lumens. Uh, nobody can say it's, you know, 500 lumens, 200 lumens, whatever. You cannot measure. So it really just comes down to how bright it is. And all I can tell you is that our static lights are brighter than any other uh, static fixture out there 
or RGBW. But with that said, technology is always getting better. Um, so we are looking for an RGBW uh, alternative, but as of now, we do not have that. Uh, hold on. Thank you for lighting non-dimmable. Okay, all of our fixtures are dimmable. Our LED boards are, um, are dimmable, our drivers are not. So if you have a situation where you want dimmable fixtures, we can deliver. All we need to do is you need to talk to our engineering team. You know, we have to make the fixtures. Uh, instead of getting the fixtures out next day, it'll take three to five days. But, um, you know, we would make them without the driver. And then we would talk with, you know, our engineering team and make sure that the uh, proper equipment is being used back at the controller because you do have to have uh, uh, drivers back at the panel. So, yes, we can deliver fixtures that are dimmable. Um, let me see. Lighting a long boxwood hedge, best fixture. All right, boxwood hedges can be a little bit difficult because going back to the whole thing about reflectivity, you know, boxwood hedges are green or a darker green. Um, you know, they, they're going to suck in light. So it really depends on how dense they are. If they're not, you know, if they're, if they're a little bit more, you know, sparse and not so dense, you could always put a well light in and illuminate from, uh, from up, you know, from the bottom up. Um, but if they are darker, um, it, it could get a little tricky and maybe we could do is, and if you sent us a photo, we could certainly, uh, you know, give you our input. It is easier with a photo, but you can actually take a directional light and put it at the end of the bed and kind of turn it on an angle and just shine it right down the row of hedges. And that would, I actually did that in my house and it came out really nice. Um, but if you could, I really appreciate a photo and then we give you a better idea what to use. So. I'm checking to see if there's any other questions. Um, can you guys send me an email so I was present and how many hours of seminar was from last? Yes, we'll send you that email. Um, do we use lighting wire string balls? Um, no, we do not. Um, and as far as the Kelvin temperature is concerned, uh, you know, 2,700, 3,000 are the most popular. It really depends on the market. You know, in the southeast, the southwest, the, the 3,000 Kelvin is really popular, while 2,700 Kelvin is uh, more popular in the northeast and uh, midwest. So it really depends on uh, what area of the country you're in and also what, uh, what your client is looking for. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions i think that's it um that is it so hopefully i was able to answer all your questions hopefully this is very insightful um again any questions you have you know we have a full team you know inside sales team um each has their own designated territory they'd be more than happy to help you with any kind of design um uh projects you have um they know the product really really well uh they're there to help you solve uh design issues, design problems. So uh, please, you know, if you have any projects you need help on, you know, reach out to the Garden Light uh, LED team. Okay, everybody. Well, listen, thank you very much uh, for attending today. Really, really appreciate it. We're always gonna continue to do more, uh, more webinars to, uh, to bring more knowledge and education to our, uh, to our uh, partners. So, uh, when you see the next one, please uh, attend, and uh, hopefully you find them uh, useful and helpful. And uh, again, thanks for uh, attending. Appreciate it, and have a great rest of the day.